Welcome back to another Wednesday episode, and for once, I'm actually working on my own car. I said in a couple previous episodes, I think the KMI Auto Review, I covered it. I will be turboing this car. Um, it doesn't make enough power for what I use it for, which is mostly street use. And my target is like 300 to 400 wheel, which I can do without doing the BMW swap. So to do that though, I do need to install a six speed Mazda transmission, which if you've ever driven one, the ratios are super short. Um, and I don't wanna be shifting constantly, like shifting out a second at 50 something miles an hour. That's, you're constantly shifting. So to counteract that, I'm going to be swapping my 4.1 Torsen out for this 363. Um, a local buddy of mine is parting out his car and he had this laying around along with the six speed that you can see behind me over there. So I bought the whole package along with uh, axles uh, drive shaft, all that. So I'm gonna be switching this over. I currently have competition diff mounts, so I wanna retain those. So I'll be separating this case, putting my welded case on the back, and then throwing it back in the car. But I'm gonna walk you guys through how to do it uh, while I'm in the garage today. So let's, let's get to it. The first thing I've gotta do is to get the car up in the air and then take the wheels and exhaust system off because they're gonna be in my way. There's a couple ways to drop the diff uh, concerning the axles. So mine, the axles have been in and out probably 10 times in the last two years. So I know they come out. Uh, if you cannot take your axles out, if you just loosen this top nut here on the, uh, the top of the knuckle, you can pull it out towards you and then you can pop the axle out and kind of push it to the side of the diff and leave it in the end here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is undo the top nut and undo the axle nut, take the whole assembly out Makes it way simpler. You can just drop the diff straight down. There's no like working around it to get it uh, to come out right. So that's what we're gonna do now. And then we'll get to uh, unhooking the actual diff. So before you take the axles out, I almost forgot this. Drain the diff fluid. Uh, otherwise, when you pop the axles out, it might not flow out yet, but the second you start to lower it, you're gonna just make a mess everywhere. So. We can do that right now. Once you got the fluid drained, then it's safe to pop the axles out. Uh, I've tipped both hubs out away from the car, so I should have enough room to slide each axle out of the side uh, and then bring it down underneath here. So. The easiest way is to take a crowbar or like a huge screwdriver, stick it between the flange on the side of the, the differential and the actual axle and just pop. And there's a it's held in place by a little snap ring or snap collar, I guess, that's inside the differential. So you'll just hear it pop out and then you can just slide it the rest of the way out. So I was wrong. You want to pop the axle out of the hub side first uh, with the hub tilted down and then pop it out of the diff and then you can slide it out either out the wheel well or out underneath like I did. I feel like I've done this enough that I should know but little things you forget. Up next we're going to take the four bolts out of the drive shaft uh, and then unhook the PPF from the trans and then that way it will only be held in by these two uh, support plates up here and at that point we'll get the jack underneath support the diff, unbolt those, and drop it out of the car. So once you got the PPF unhooked, uh, you'll see this jack next to me. I have it pushing right up on the bottom of the diff because I'm gonna undo the big 19 millimeter, I think, 
nuts from the, uh, the big diff braces and then the two 12 millimeter nuts from the sides. Once those are out, you just kind of slowly come down with the jack and the whole diff will carefully drop out of the car. So both diffs are here on the table. This is the one I just took out of my car. It's the 4.1. Uh, you can see I've welded some reinforcement plates on here uh, in one of the earlier Kamiata swap episodes. So I want to retain these because if I'm going to be making big power, big power, um, I do not want to break this arm off. So this, if you're just doing a regular diff swap, is an extra step. But I'm going to undo these bolts here and then put this rear end cover onto this 363 diff. The buyer of the 4.1 is going to get these diff bushings. Uh, I've had these before and they're way too harsh for me, so I'm trying to maintain some sort of street comfort. Uh, these are competition mounts, like I said earlier. They do just fine. There's no really crazy NVH, so I like them and I would like to keep them. So that's what we're going to do. There you have it, there's the basic assembly. I torqued everything to 17 to 20 foot pounds, uh, except for this guy. I uh, can't really get a torque wrench in there without hammering this out, so we're just going by you know, hand tight feels right. This would be good to throw in the car right now uh, if I weren't like moderately OCD. So I'm gonna touch up this part here in silver and then this whole section, except for this guy, uh, is gonna be painted in black, just like the old one was. That way it looks all nice, nice underneath the car. So I'm gonna do that now, let it dry, and then we'll throw it back in the car and see how long my gear ratio feels. But it's gonna be, I think I gained uh, 10 miles an hour in second gear with this swap. For now, when I go to the six speed, I'll lose it all again. So temporary, but we'll see, cause I'm interested. So I've painted a couple of these now and I've painted really the underside of my car with POR15 and this stuff, which I'll go over in a second. POR15 is really expensive for what it is. It does a good job at it, but uh, what I've had better experience with for like a third of the cost is this uh, Magic tractor truck or tractor and truck implement or something like that. Yeah, tractor truck and implement. Uh, it's meant to paint like heavy machinery like tractors that live out in a field for their entire lifetime. Uh, it's dirt cheap. Tractor Supply carries it. This is not sponsored, but uh, I love this stuff so much that I'd give it a shout out. Um, it goes on easy, it's self-leveling, it's essentially POR15 without the price tag. Uh, I've had this can for four years now probably. Uh, it's still about half full and I've painted a lot of stuff with it. Uh, I've let friends borrow it for their subframes. My subframes are painted, like three diff swaps. So definitely use this stuff if you're gonna be doing anything like this. Uh, it comes in like black, red, and blue. So this is actual POR15, but this, anything black, I use this stuff hands down. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't seem to dry up. 
in the container like POR15 does either, which is a big plus. So check it out. So there you have it, fully touched up uh, on the black side here. Uh, I touched this up, it's a very similar color to Silver Sharpie, so I just kind of touched up the spots that were bad with Silver Sharpie. I'm gonna let this dry, it takes maybe like an hour to dry, so I'm gonna go mow my lawn that I've been neglecting for like two weeks. Uh, once this is done and dry, and I'm not gonna get stuff all over my hands, we will throw it in the car, and I'm really excited to see how low my cruising fifth gear is with this setup. Uh, the 363 will make your car feel slower. You're not accelerating as fast, right? Because the gears are longer uh, and you're in gear longer. So I'm interested to see how that change feels. Um, we put a 3.9 in Joe's autocross car that you will be seeing the review of shortly if you haven't already. And that car with a turbo feels faster with the 3.9 uh, just because you're carrying more speed at the top of the gear. So who knows, maybe this thing will feel like an absolute rocket but like I said, it's temporary because once I put the six speed in it for boost, uh, I'm gonna be right back to like within two miles an hour of where I am with the five speed and the four one. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go mow. I'll be back with you guys in about two hours. One eternity later. Lawn is mowed, paint is dry-ish, and I'm impatient. So I'm gonna glove up, throw this puppy back in the car because I want to see what it does on the highway. So. Uh, install is really the opposite of removal, so I'm just going to kind of time lapse you through all this footage just to get it done. Uh, if anything comes up, I'll just stop the video and kind of talk through it. So one more thing to note before I throw it in the car. Uh, I'm not just putting any regular drive shaft back in. This is the uh, Flying Miata rebuildable drive shaft. So if you look there, um, the U-joints on these are actually fully, you can take them out put new ones in, replace them. Uh, whereas the stock ones don't have that option. So uh, this was actually included in the diff kit, or diff kit. This was included when I bought the diff and the transmission from my buddy Noor. Uh, brand new in the box. I didn't even know what it was until I took it out. So that was a cool surprise. But yeah, so we're gonna throw this guy in instead of the stock uh, drive shaft. Shouldn't really make any difference. It's just nice for like long-term serviceability. So it's a pretty cool part. I've never seen one of these in person before.
Hopefully you can hear me over the drone with the hardtop on. I'm going out for the test run right now with the 363 just to see how it feels. And I forgot sunglasses, of course. I did not replace the speed sensor in my transmission, so I have a speedometer app via GPS on my phone just to see how far off I actually am when I'm cruising so that I know when I'm driving kind of what to target my speed at on the speedometer. When I six speed swap it this winter, uh, there will be barely a difference between the five speed and the four one, so I won't need to, I'll just use the five speed speed sensor probably. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, please somebody correct me so I can get the right parts. At 45, my speedometer reads 40, so it's about five miles an hour off now. Uh, it's only gonna get worse as I go faster. Five miles an hour is 3400 rpm. My speedometer is 10 miles an hour off though. So it's worth noting that I won't actually lose this really nice ratio when I go to the six speed. It's just that fifth gear will be as good as fourth gear is right now. And then sixth gear at the six speed will be comparable to fifth gear. So every year between gets shorter. So one through five will feel like a five speed with a four one. And then uh, sixth gear will be like a five speed with a 363 in fifth gear only. So it's got to give and take. The gears aren't really longer anywhere else, but this will be nice with a six speed. And so will three to 400 horsepower. But that'll be this winter. That's not a couple day project. Just got back from the test drive. Everything seemed to go perfectly well, actually. Uh, took it up pretty high in third gear to make sure nothing was shaky or loose. And it felt awesome. As with a longer dip, it does feel slower. We're gonna remedy that this winter, but for now, uh, I wanted to put this one in so that I could sell the 4.1 that I have, and then also make sure that everything was kosher with this setup. The best part about the 363 in a five speed like this, even in the six speed and six gear, uh, cruising at 65 miles an hour puts you right at 3000 RPM, which is way better than your typical like four or 4500 RPM that you deal with in any other Miata. For a turbo setup, this is probably a sweet setup. Uh, even if you're making 250 horsepower on the five speed, uh, when I put the six speed in, we're gonna see, it's probably gonna be still way too much power for what I'm capable of driving. So we're gonna, we'll get into how we're gonna control that a little bit next year. But if you have any questions or anything like that, please uh, DM me on Instagram, comment down below. Uh, and if you like this kind of footage, definitely like the video, subscribe. Uh, we'll, we'll be making more of this stuff. We got more stuff planned for uh, the next several weeks at least. But if you have more opinions on what you wanna see, let us know down below in the comments, or like I said, DM me on Instagram or uh, message me on Facebook. So before you take the axles out, I almost forgot this.